Hi, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. I'm Vivian Aqua and I'm the workplace wellness advocate. And before I introduce uh, my next guest and also introduce what I'm doing and who I am, I want to play a short video about what I do. Let's humanize the workplace. As a workplace wellness advocate, Vivian Aqua helps managers with keeping their team members healthy, happy, and safe. Inspired by Richard Branson's quote, take care of your employees and they will take care. As a result of working with her, your team members will go from disconnected, unmotivated, burned out, to happy, engaged, and productive. People who thrive have a positive impact on your clients and your company. It's always challenging dealing with this technical stuff, right? So uh, I receive a lot of comments regarding the video that I shared before was playing double. So I'm just trying a few things out. So let's humanize the workplace. So I am doing a two week summit about humanizing the workplace because I feel that it's important. It's an important factor that we need to uh, that we need to add in the workplace. And also, I want to you know, share some tips, but also invite other people, right? So up to now, people have been watching in the following places. So all of, it's all it has been all over the States. It has been in South America, in Brazil, in Suriname. It has also been in Africa, South Africa, Ghana. And I even made it up to Japan, right? So please share where you're from. And uh, if if you can hear, you know, if the sound is loud and clear, and if you can hear me, if you can hear me well, but also if, if the if the the screen is also okay, right? Because I need some feedback to always adjust to see if I can, you know, tweak it a little bit and make it a little bit better. So my name is Vivian Aqua, the workplace wellness advocate, and I am also tech savvy. And uh, it's important that we you know, share the love. So I'm inviting so many guest speakers this week regarding the topic, let's humanize the workplace. And the only thing that I'm asking of you is if you could please share the love and also just clap or just use one of the, the emojis that LinkedIn has for us, right? So for those of you who are watching live, please let me know if you're hashtag team live. And for those of you who are watching the replay, uh, let me know if you're watching the replay. And of course, if you have any questions or comments, um, the replay is always there. This video will always stay. So I'll definitely go back and watch, uh, watch the comments and tag us, right? Tag us today. So today I have a very interesting guest. I'm going to invite him. And his name is Jermaine. And before I, um, I'm going to unmute his mic. Oh, you unmute it. Jermaine, can you unmute yourself? <laughs> I'm going to introduce you. So Jermaine is a skills gap advocate who is passionate about the potential of people. His unique background and experiences allow him to support upskilling in the areas of sports, marketing and technology community and community development. So that's a, a, a mouthful, but I'm happy that Jermaine is joining us. I just met him. Uh, I just met him recently on uh, via LinkedIn, of course, the power of LinkedIn. And I noticed that he's a skills gap advocate. And as a, you know, workplace advocate, I really have to, you know, bring all the advocates in here to support the, you know, the, the human factor at the workplace, especially when it comes to our skills. Um, there's a lot that we need to do, right? Do you have something to say, Jermaine? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm passionate about this area of skills gap because I've recognized just for myself and um, and now for others, the importance of being able to take um, just an insight, right? Um, mm -hmm. and, and pair it with an individual so that they can get to the next level, right? That's what I'm passionate about. The opportunity that creates is unlimited. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about my background and, and my story here and um, just the way that it correlates to, to skills gap, but it's an area that I'm truly passionate about. Okay, so before we go further, I have a small video to share with you. It takes about three minutes, but it's important as an introduction for this session. This session is all about level up your skills. 
And um, I'm going to show a video of Deloitte. It's a YouTube video. So if you want to, the link of the video, I can definitely share that in the comments. And please let us know if you're watching. So from time to time, I have to watch on my, on my phone to see the comments that are coming in because within this tool, I cannot upload the comments of LinkedIn. LinkedIn isn't there yet. So for those of you who are in reach of LinkedIn, please let them know that we need to have the comments in so that we can also engage with others, right? And for those of you who are watching via Twitter, know that if you have any comments or something to share, or you want to ask a question regarding the skills, just ask them now or ask them later so that I can share that with Jermaine. So I'm going to start the video now. Everyone's talking about the future of work and a lot of what they're saying is disturbing. Robots are taking over all manual labor. AI will replace all kinds of white collar jobs. Deloitte, we don't see things that way. The future of work is this. That's right, people. People empowered to do what we do best. Thinking creatively, using our emotional intelligence, making value judgments, communicating, teaching, sharing wisdom. Our human capital teams are plugged into worldwide developments and trends, and we see five clear realities we can all act upon right now. Reality one, everything is on the table. 57% of jobs globally are highly vulnerable to automation. Work, workers, workplaces, they're all gonna change dramatically within the next seven years. Why now? Because a number of factors have brought us to a tipping point. The world of work would change as radically as the world of personal communication began changing 10 years ago. Do you remember questions like these? So change is coming. And to make the most of it, we need to open our minds. Reality 2. Technology learns faster than we can. Amazon uses robots to select, stack, package and ship items with almost no human intervention. We already know technology learns far faster than we can, but it's also true that it has changed our personal lives more than the way we work. That's good news, because as technology changes the world of work, we'll already be familiar with many of its advances. Reality three, the new workforce will be highly diverse. 70% of business leaders believe they need a new mix of talent and skills in the future. We've been writing about the open talent economy for years, well, today, it's here. Traditional employees will increasingly be joined by contractors, freelancers, and crowdsourced talent, as well as robots and AI applications. Office parties will never be the same again. Reality 4. Work to learn, not learn to work. The average half-life of a learned business competency has dropped from 30 years in 1984 to 5 years in 2014, and is still dropping. As routine work is automated, we'll be able to focus more on truly human skills. We'll have careers built around learning instead of careers built around jobs. Reality 5. Public policy needs to catch up. By 2020, more than 75% of the S&P 500 will be companies that we have not heard of yet. All this change will happen while the government still struggles to come to grips with it. But we can't wait for them. It will be up to our leaders in business and society to help drive public policy and bring everyone along. With these five new realities in mind, Deloitte is working with organizations around the world to help them recalibrate talent, technology, and workplaces. So while everything will change, we have the framework that can help you understand how to make it work best for you. Not to advertise too much for Deloitte, but I think in a way there is an essence regarding this uh, this video. And uh, what do you think? First of all, what what is your out outtake for this video? Yeah, and like you said, not to avoid to, uh, or to advertise for too much, but really, mm -hmm. it's 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 reality. Um, yeah. they can create that message, but um, majority of consultant firms, everybody else can see that this is the direction. So uh, they can. Mm -hmm essentially say the same exact thing and they'll be right on it. They've pointed out a lot of realities there that are coming in as unavoidable. Mm -hmm, definitely. So the first question that I wanted to add, I want to ask you is what are the must have skill sets 
for the future of work employees? Okay, must have skill sets for future of work employees. Well, uh, there's quite a bit, and I think a lot of it is 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 based on um, those soft skill sets. And I think one is just collaboration, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think that um, the future of work employees will need to understand the value of, of really truly collaborating with a team. And I think about it in a holistic sense. So um, I read a book recently from one of uh, my favorite people, uh, astronaut Ron Guerin, and he talks about a a global perspective, right? Being able, or not a global perspective, sorry, a orbital perspective, um, being an astronaut and being able to see, you know, that vantage point of, of what can be accomplished when we really look at it from a greater uh, viewpoint. And so when you think about this in the workplace, um, there's an opportunity to really get everyone on board when there's a shared purpose. And so, uh, for uh, collaborative individuals, they're able to um, understand that a lot, a lot better, right? And see um, just the direction of the company. It, it resonates with the leaders within the team, but it also helps to bring people on when there's a shared vision or shared purpose, and they can all communicate that to mm -hmm. allow you know individuals to go in the same direction. I think uh, communication is also a part of that. Right, uh, so we're constantly evolving, and um, and and with all the new technologies that are coming out, and all the all the uh, different software technology stacks that we're including in our work each day, um, communication is vital. You know, written um, verbal communication is important for us to continue to get better at it. It's something that we need to practice. Something that we need to um, discover. You know, what are our areas of discomfort and figure out how to challenge them each day and figure out how we can actually bring people on and help them to understand what we're trying to express and what mm -hmm. we need to understand. Again, shared purpose. So uh, you're saying collaboration, communication. Mm -hmm. What else do we need to add on mm -hmm. into that skill set? Sure. Um, one of the areas that I think is also really, really um, important. And you can see this um, in a range of different employee employees now, especially like millennials and Gen Z, but persistence is mm -hmm. also a key aspect of, of um, the, the future. We need to, um, it's going to be challenging, right? There are going to be a lot of, and even now when we think about our roles today, and uh, they mentioned just, you know, uh, the reality of a uh, work to learn. And so um, with, we know that with learning any new skill set, there are mm -hmm. off points, you know, they're, you know, hidden barriers. And that's when you actually realize that you're, uh, you don't realize, but that's when you actually know you're getting close to a breakthrough, a learning opportunity. And so there's going to be a lot of that. And so if we can gain that persistence that we need to get over that hump um, when, whenever it comes, because it will come, then it will also be at an advantage because a lot of people will drop off because of not you know, pushing through. Yeah, and regarding that, because you also shared a question that uh, you wanted to, you know, we can both answer regarding what the employer's role is because you you spoke before what, you know, employees need as a skill set, but how can employers help them? How can the employers help them in their development, right? Yeah. Yeah, so um, the employer has a, a huge, a huge role in this, in this, right? Um, and they're really, um, I think, going going forward, employers will have um, tremendous um, input on how to really shape um, communities mm -hmm. because of their impact and the purpose that they can, you know, um, advocate for. And so for them, it's about like seeing the individual, um, allowing um, processes and allowing um, just different, um, um, really implementing different things within the workplace that allows and empowers individuals to be who they are mm -hmm. and to learn the way that they actually learn. Give them an opportunity to really grow um, by identifying that individual, right? We talked about sort of, a, you know, um, 
skills gap audits, right? We need to figure out, you know, where an individual is. And that's a part of reflection. And that starts with the company. The company first needs to understand where they are, what areas they need to um, improve in, and then um, being able to um, help those individuals grow by allowing them to see where they are. And so okay. I'm, 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 I'm going to uh, add another layer to that because it sounds very simple and it sounds very easy to do. But then again, you can do an audit. But what if you uh, what if your company or what if your employer doesn't provide you the tools to grow? What if your employer is doing the audit but doesn't have a provision no or a budget for you to to yeah. grow your skills? Yeah. Um, I, I think about this as an individual. I think that I think about it as a challenge, uh, as a as a former student athlete. And so, whenever mm -hmm. I see an opportunity like that, as an individual, as an employee, I see it as a challenge. Right? How can yeah. I take the opportunity that not being provided the resources to show that I can get to the next level by mm -hmm. being self directed? And really, that's another soft skill or another um, really attribute that will be needed for that. Um, that 21st, you know, that 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 new century uh, employee, it's really thinking about how can I be more self-directed, uh, whether mm -hmm. or not my employer has provided the resources or not, how can I be um, efficient, how can I be effective in finding the resources that I need um, to upskill in a certain area. Um, so what you're, what you're saying is you should always invest in yourself and not wait until somebody absolutely. else invests in you, right? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Clear. Absolutely. Yes, that's a complete, you know, self-direction. And then and, and for the employer, you know, as much as we want to put this in the employer's hand for, for them to own, mm -hmm. it's really about the employees' responsibility. They're owning this opportunity here in that um, if the employer has done so much as to provide an, anal an analysis to um, sort of see what areas or what skills they're uh, devoid of or of the employee themselves, then that's, uh, that's a benefit in itself. Right. So we can take that that understanding and saying, hey, I'm weak in these areas or I need to grow in these areas. I can do the rest from here. I can find myself the mentors and the um, the practitioners, surround myself with individuals that I need to surround myself with and mm -hmm. the resources in order to get there. Mm -hmm. But then you're talking to you're talking about an employee that is aware of uh, finding mentors, it's aware right. of the power of mentorship, right? Because I learned about the principles of mentoring in in the Netherlands. We're not that far. I know that a lot of uh, a lot of people who are having networks, especially when their parents are entrepreneurs or they have a certain mm -hmm. um, right. a certain background, that networking is something that starts when they are young. They go to hockey mm -hmm. clubs or they go to certain sports where they network. And I learned that networking game later on. So for yeah. me, um, it's different. And now I know that the power of everything is lies in yeah. the power of mentorship, right? How yeah. can we help raise awareness regarding um, claiming your own career? Yeah, that is huge. Um, and I think um we can't stress it enough you know just as an individual for ourselves to to hammer that into the next generation and to our communities uh to really understand hey um if you want to um i'm trying to remember the quote that um i was told maybe while i was in college or maybe um or later in high school was that you know if you want to you can't you can't you can't fly with the eagle if you're if you're hanging around with the vultures or something mm. like that. So it's also, and, uh, it's also your surroundings, right? Who right. you surround with yourself? Yeah. And that, yeah. I can remember now. Maybe in, in you know in college, sometimes I was always telling my younger brothers that if you want to, the quickest way to get from one place to another is by mm -hmm. surrounding yourself with the individuals that are yeah. there, right? Yeah. And so. Um, we need to do a better job of continuing to push that message because it's what it's what has been proven right mm -hmm. um throughout throughout history and i don't think it's ever going to stop and so 
um, for that individual does that does not have access to that? That is a great question. I don't I don't know if I even have a single answer of how exactly we get um, get more awareness to to that. But it, it starts, starts with, with here. It starts, starts with us having a right? conversation and also sharing that about about yeah. that, right? So. I, I do believe that, especially I love this digital age because I can use this tool, but I can also use yeah. social media to raise awareness regarding things that I did not have access to 20 years yeah. ago, right? Because that was the beginning of the internet era where Google looked differently, where I had to use mm -hmm. textbooks, where I had to go to the library to look up yeah. things, right? And now yeah. the library is on my computer. So it's definitely a different era where you can look up things at, at the moment and also, you know, read, read uh, invest in your knowledge. You can start with reading a book or listening to a book regarding yeah. your own talents. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So you, you, you mentioned uh, something about skills gap audit. Why is that important? Not only for the individual, but also for the company to do that, to invest in that. Yeah. I think ultimately it starts with a reflection, you know, mm -hmm. of really understanding where you are and where you actually want to be. I think with any, you think about it as an individual, when you when you want to get somewhere, you have to first analyze where you are. And that's the same for a company. If we are trying to get to A or we're trying to get to B, then we have to re f figure out how far away from B we are. Mm -hmm. And um, by doing so, um, taking the time to invest in that audit, figure out what our workforce looks like and what are the skill sets that they actually need in order to get to that place. Um, and as an individual, we have to, um, again, be self-directed to, um, to figure out what skill sets are important for whether it's this quarter or whether it's for the long term of my um, the, my growth in this company, I want to be CMO. What are the things that CMOs are doing, and do I know? Do I have a pathway towards getting there? Mm -hmm. And so it's about from a reflection for us um, to understand, you know, how do I get to this place? Um, so it's 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 my. Can a three hundred and sixty degrees uh, feedback tool? be part of the skills gap audit? Um, well, I think a part of that is, um, I think fast feedback is always, um, is always important, it's always necessary. But mm -hmm. I think when you consider an audit, I think it's a little bit more, um, especially for the size of the companies, you gotta think about, um, you got to think about just transparency, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of individuals and uh, transparency and communication, right? Because if a company wants to do this, not all individuals will be willing to put their hands up and say, hey, I'm weak in this area, right? And I'm, or, or am I ready to have feedback on that area so that I can now be uh, monitored on something else that's not a part of my job description, mm -hmm. right? And so uh, there can be some worry there or there can just um, be some just misunderstanding of why exactly we're doing this. So a really great communication um, from the company um, is, is, is important, but also for the employee, um, it's best for them to have that open mind to realize that any feedback that I receive, um, it's about, you know, applying this towards a growth mindset for me now. Mm -hmm. Okay, you touched the subject of growth mindset, so now I have to ask that question because there's something recently come um, come up on my radar. My son, who is four years, uh, no, six years old, who started learning about growth mindset when he was four, he, my, my, me and my partner, we were talking about something and he, you know, he called upon us and told us that's a fixed mindset and I was just like, whoa, wow. where... Did you learn that? So in, in school, from the first day of school, they, they started learning about that it's okay to make mistakes and that making mistakes is a way to grow. Yes. But that's so much that we adults can learn from that, right? So wow. uh, the question that I wanted to ask was, what do you think about people who are dealing with those who have a fixed mindset and what are the tools for us to, you know, to, to challenge them to change towards a growth mindset yeah so i think that you're 
your son, you know, that was an incredible example, first of all. Yeah. I think um, but it's a relation with the uh, the, the teacher uh, relationship there, it's it's um, it's it's understanding the importance of, of failure. Mm-hmm. And um, and when we I I have Is this. it failure? Is it failure? Because I I do believe that we need to address failure in a different way. I see it as a learning moment. I see it as a learning moment where mm-hmm. For me, it's a way to, for myself to evolve. Right, right. right. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. We maybe we call it something else, but it's a journey, right? Mm-hmm. It's a journey, and it's going to have its hills and its valleys. Um, but it's it's absolutely a learning process. It's a journey, and it's an incredible journey. And I am a, a strong believer that whenever we identify these. Um, pit stops or these what seems like failure as as true challenges um, and able to we're able to to grow from there um, it takes us just immensely uh, to uh, to different places within our career just personally mm-hmm. um, I've had just some this this that has probably one of been one of the biggest breakthroughs for me really in thinking mm-hmm. about what challenges have you gone through and how has it how has it helped to shape your future, right? Yeah. Because I think about it, I really think about it as, as the richest times in our, in our life. Mm-hmm. When we have um, failures or when we have um, trouble, because mm-hmm. those, when, if you're able to have a, a mindset that allows and understands that the lessons that I learned from this point on, I have a potential of not doing that ever again in the, in my mm-hmm. life and saving or tweaking that tweaking uh, that tweaking and that. making it better yeah. yeah and and being able to it, it's so it, it provides so much value for the long run and mm-hmm. so um if we can really truly identify those opportunities as really um shift it you know that that mindset and, and see and and really sorry uh, for jumping around here but um, just to go back to your original question, how do we in the how do we we talk? How do we address um, uh, or help or support those individuals that are dealing with individuals with a fixed mindset? And I think mm-hmm. um, first of all is is allowing them to see uh, the opportunity um, yeah. in 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 failure and and um, in, in in barriers, but also to empower them as well. And to uh, allow them to to make those mistakes or show them that it's okay to make those mistakes. Um, there's also an opportunity to relate um, to them. You know, whenever I've noticed that whenever um, you are connecting with or you're talking to somebody about trying to change your mindset, obviously um, it's better to come from a place of of, of related. Where mm-hmm. I've been through this before, and this is what um, that barrier took me to, and so. Um, there's a lot that we could go into that, but I, I, I don't want to. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just also want to say hi to a few folks that are watching. So Bushra, hi, thank you for watching. And Carolina, also thank you for watching. And Angelen, also thank you for watching. So yeah. thank you for supporting us. And um, a next question that I want to uh, share, because that's a question that you had, right? In, in what ways cannot be, when people are not using their skills, it's also, in my belief, it's also affecting their way of health. It's also affecting their way of being. Yeah. They're not being their true selves, and they are putting a mask on. What What do you think about this? Yeah. Um, so, I think this is uh, probably one of the most important things here. Whenever you're in an organization or in a company, and you're truly not um, using your skill sets and the things that you're passionate about, and it's not being it's not being used. It's it's or seen, or seen. It's, yeah. it's 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 one of it's it's frustrating. First of all, right? Which um, continuously doing that equates to a lot of stress and just anxiety. And you can imagine. I don't have to tell you, right? You know, mm-hmm. whenever you're going through um, a situation, just consistent frustration. And even if it's 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 minute, but it's a buildup. Then you are. 
not doing what's optimal for your for your body for your mind mm -hmm. right and so um i i i think that is incredibly important for it to be addressed right away and um and you know just some of the ways you really think about that is to have tough conversations mm -hmm. you know having tough conversations with the employer with your peers um whether it's about you know am i am i um is what i'm doing right now um it might be supported in the company, but could I actually support the company better by doing something that I am passionate about and something that I am I am born to do, you know, that I, I know that I can do really well um, and how much more um, ROI can be received by me transferring uh, towards, you know, this area. It also it, it's also draining for the employee, right? And energy is um is effective it's it's uh how do you say it it's um i'm trying to translate from dutch to english but when somebody is negative it can also affect uh, another person who yeah, is yeah, in a positive yeah. mindset and who can also be yeah. negative right and we are already yeah. dealing with 85 percent of the workplace globally workplace who are disengaged and we want to disengage the people more by not using their skill sets i think it's important that we from time to time, just like you said, we need to do maybe a quarterly or maybe uh, every four months or every half year. You need to do an audit or you need to, you know, reevaluate yourselves, where you are, where you want to go yeah. and uh, what what tools are needed for you yeah. to grow during that yeah. journey. Yeah, it's, it's infectious, like you said. And then also yeah. you know, one thing to think about for the managers, it's also mm -hmm. it's also bad for your health as well mm -hmm. it's also bad yeah. for the company obviously yeah. right because you're you're doing a lot of um retraining or um just rework in itself right imagine yeah, but somebody we are sometimes i'm not saying the manager because we are all people right so the managers the leaders the employees sometimes we think too much on short term instead of long term right. because we have right. to it's the end of the month the end of the year December is for a lot of companies. It's it's a do or die month, right? It's a it's a deal breaker or deal maker to see how the end of the year, you know, how your whole year went, and did you make did you meet your goal right. or not? Yeah, yeah, uh, it's 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 expensive. It's mm -hmm. expensive, and if we don't look at it long term, um, we're we're really missing out on some opportunity there. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. And um, this is a bit, well, it's a bit off topic, but on topic as well, but how do we foster diversity? You you mentioned something about community, the importance of a community, but how do we foster diversity through a community? Uh, well, I think one, it's about empowering. Um, mm -hmm. and how do you empower? I think you actually start with listening, right? Mm. Um, so you, as a as an employer, as a leader with an organization, um, just as an individual within a community, it's important to observe and listen of what uh, your community is saying. You think about it in a way of a, like a, a startup um, that's trying to build uh, something viable. And if you're trying to build something viable, it's not it's not it's not uh, right to create it and then get the feedback from the customers, right? Mm -hmm. You want to create it in sync um, while you're developing so that when the product is ready, you can see um, them adapt adapt to it because they've had input in it. So it's vitally important for you to observe and to listen while you're trying to create uh, a more inclusive opportunity or a more inclusive uh, community um, within your workplace. Um, listening, observing, and then um, being able to empower, create those opportunities, whether it's uh, an individual or for a tribe, you know, um, identifying what is important to them through listening and um, being able to help them empower and create um, really some of the solutions that they're going to, uh, that they're really, they're going to solve the, the issues mm -hmm. um, when you empower them because you are giving them <clears throat> 
um, the ability to create what they see in their mind and bring in others. Um, we know that from a top-down perspective, if a, if a manager is trying to uh, put something to, to force an employee to do or even share an idea, it's a lot harder to adapt um, uh, compared to the individual having that idea and being able to share that and, and bring the community in. Mm -hmm. that's, that's so true. Um, let me see which question I could share. It's the end of the year and I'm already talking about the end of the year. So what are the three top breakthroughs which an employee should have or is it is it relating to myself? Is this question relating to myself or is this question related to in general? Okay. Um, so talk about the three breakthroughs this year as it relates to uh, the workplace. Mm -hmm. um, well, um, huh. for, for, for me, I think about, you know, um, I, I, I see tough conversations has been mm -hmm. you know, just as, uh, as has been really a key uh, breakthrough from you this year. Have, understanding that, you know, um, whether it's personal or whether it's um, within a workplace, it's important to have uh, tough conversations um, because tough conversations help you to, um, first of all, get to a mutual understanding, but it also helps um, for you to um, be equipped with what you need in order to move forward. And so um, my mentor actually shared this with me a while back in that, hey, you know, people look at conflict um, or, or really, um, what's the other word? They look at it as a confrontation. They look at confrontation mm -hmm. as a opportunity to come back, right? When really confrontation is about turning around and facing the issue, right? And so what we try to do a lot of times is either avoid or we come back right away. But if we turn around and face the issue and have a good um, uplifting conversation in, in, in love, right, and in uh, mutual respect, then we are able to really elevate and go um, um, much further um, than if we try to avoid that. So tough conversations definitely one for me. I... Um, uh, obviously, uh, mentorship and 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 really um, finding the master of the craft is 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 key. Uh, for me, I have been able to just connect with some incredible mentors over the last few years that have helped me to move from point A to point B because I've been able to see the way that they work, the way that they communicate and express their um, um, their goals. And so um, it's it's more than just mentorship in itself, but it's really building that that building that relationship with that mentor, mm -hmm. so that um, you can um, really see what's important in order to um, to really grow. Yeah. And then with, um, maybe one more thing. Um, Uh, I can't say enough about listening, you know, really intentional listening. Um, and maybe that's not a breakthrough for anybody else. But, you know, for me, I can struggle with that sometimes. So um, intentional listening is always key. Um, being able to show people that you really care about what they have to say. And that um, once you receive that, you want to um, support them either by reflecting that or um, by doing something with it um, so you can show that it, it's meaningful mm -hmm. for me personally it was um it was about starting the year not feeling confident enough to you know to have uh to do public speaking in english which i managed to conquer there was you know a little auntie sitting on my sitting on my shoulder and it was something that i um told myself and i found a way to make that auntie smaller, right, on my shoulder. Another thing is um, I'm, I'm saying that I am a workplace advocate and being an advocate is also important that you address uh, the things that are ugly in a positive, maybe in a positive way. And that's why one of the reasons why I really wanted to share something about humanizing the workplace. So for me, uh, having this platform, doing this online thing, well, 
I am, to be honest, I've been an introvert. I'm, I'm turning 40 next year. So being an introvert for about, let's say, um, 30 years and doing this and also standing on stages, it's yeah. it's still amazing. But then again, my son, you know, my son is my, my, my power, my everything. And he inspires me to look beyond that and, you know, face my fear in, in different ways. Um, and the, the last thing is being able to connect with people like you. I mean, there, there is an ocean between us, but we still manage to connect with each other and have a conversation. What is what is important for the workplace to be more, uh, more of a, a home, more of human, more of ourselves and where we can be ourselves. Any final thoughts, any last thoughts that you want to share? Because I uh, have so much to ask, but we're running out of time. So. Yeah, no, I, I, I applaud you, first of all, for, you know, doing, um, stepping out of your comfort zone and, and, and doing that, because I think that's what it's about, you know, and I admire that being able to um, do the things that are hard, right? Do the things that are hard, that anything that's worthwhile, right? You have to go through this journey. And so uh, thank you for for what you're doing, the, how you're leading this effort, and then um, and just even creating this this opportunity for us to connect, no matter where we are. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I'm, I'm grateful, and um, and uh, we have now this uh, standard that we have to to shoot for because of what you created. So great job. Definitely, definitely. I hope to inspire people you know inspire not only this this is not a, a platform where i'm going to finger point only towards the employers because i do believe that it's a joint uh, responsibility in humanizing the workplace and it's also my way of sharing you know you have this this video you can look back into it and you can learn from it so that you can at least make a, a change for better make a change for good so Thank you. Please stay on because I'm going to announce the, the next speaker and then we'll talk after the broadcast is ended. So thank you for uh, sharing your valuable insight regarding the skills gap, mm -hmm. but also thank you for sharing your valuable thoughts. So uh, let's please stay online. <laughs> and for the, 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 the people that are listening at the moment, um, tomorrow is my last guest, and her name is Marjolein Vlug. She's Dutch, as I am, but the, the broadcast will be totally English, and it's all about being the real you at work. What is needed to be the real you, right? So tomorrow it's a, a bit early. For those of you who are, you know, uh, on the other side of the ocean, know that it's a bit early, but you can definitely watch the replay and let me know what you think of the broadcast. So. Till tomorrow, we'll talk about being the real you at work. And uh, I will also want to, again, say thank you for Jermaine. Until next time, bye.